So we are getting into some Who's Gaming Now action here with a very special guest. We have um, the Alien Melon here. Um, actually, I'm not sure. Do you, do you usually go by your nickname or do you usually go by your first and last name? I do Alien Melon. Okie dokie. Well, then we will just stick with that going forward here. Lord Wiki, Hall and Fewer, how are you folks doing? Yes, this is indeed an awesome developer. It's been uh, featured by uh, Indicade and got a chance to show stuff at E3, and that's that's where I know her from. So, But this isn't necessarily just about the person, it's also about the product. So I am going to get us into Tetragedon. Now, you know, I should probably try to balance the audio because I think the website's a little on the louder side here and I, yeah. <laughs> I don't want that to overwhelm things. I guess I'll get it started and then um, I'll see what I can do in my mixer to lower the volume on browser flash. So, Tetragedon. <laughs> 8 shit. <laughs> so, just at the very start here, how'd you come up with the um, the the idea for like coming up with this silly like broken web page internet meme sort of a uh, uh, style in general? I kind of all just fell together because mm -hmm. you know, like I like drawing from anything reminiscent of web and old computers and you know, blue screen or the BIOS or, old, you know, the old computer DOS when you set up your game and calibrate your joystick or all that, you know, just anything Assigning IRQ and DMA ports and stuff then. Yeah, yeah all that. <laughs> so a anything iconic, just throw it in this big blender and s that comes, you know, that came out. Awesome. I see you've got a little uh, Mario pipe looking thing in the corner there. Is that the, uh, the help or... Uh Easter egg. It's a it's a little thing that takes you somewhere else. Well, let's see what someplace else is. Huh? Is this uh, a game or is this? I guess this is more things to click. This is kind of one of those uh -huh. uh, Easter egg sorts of. Yeah, there's a lot of that on the site. Like, if you would go in the site, then there's technical support in the corner, which takes you then to a little chat bot thingy that's just not really technical support, but you can talk to and, like, you know, if you ask it about the site, it'll start complaining about that you can't talk about it's under NDA or whatever. That's you know, funny. Like, I, I clicked on that. I was like, wait a minute. I don't want to be bugging you, like, at all sorts of weird hours here, but... No, that's that's hilarious. I, I didn't even investigate that at all. That's pretty cool. So there's definitely it's it's more than just the games to check out here, folks. Definitely you gotta come through and check out all of what Tetragedon is. Uh but I can hear that the audio is not coming through properly, so let me adjust this. There, that sounds right and get into my mixer here and see if I can make it so it won't blow your ears out. Let's play some games. Enter the HTML5 site. Yes, everybody. That just happened. <laughs> The, the monkey apparently dove into some sort of explosion, and I couldn't quite see. That's the thing. I thought the monkey would move so I could see what was behind on some of the blue screen because I, I wanted to read everything, but I can tell that you've kind of got things obscured there a little bit. You can resize the browser to squish the monkey out of the way or something, you know? Like, oh, that's funny. But it, it's all layered on itself and all over the place, so. Gotcha. Email, great. <laughs> that's uh, you, yeah, that's funny. You got some some interesting stuff going on here. So let's uh, let's actually get into the games here a little bit. And uh, while we do that, I kind of want to actually let people get a better understanding of who you are and you know how you got into to art and all of this stuff. So I guess you you would be the better person to know. Just lay it on us here. Well, uh, 
it seems like I've always been doing this kind of stuff, you know, like there's always a computer in the house and I was always doing stuff on it. And I come from a really traditional art background, like, you know, the classic art and a lot of artists in the family, but I wanted my stuff to do stuff. Like I liked interactivity, so, you know, and I was, on it, doing internet things ever since internet was a, thing. a niche, you know, yeah, a niche like you had to explain what internet was to people, you know, like see forever ago now. And I was and uh, doing experimental stuff there, and then eventually it became games. I didn't always call it games, but like I had this project called Blue Suburbia, and it was like interactive poetry and stuff. and. It was funny because some people started calling it a game, and at first I was like, "No, you don't understand. It's not a game. How can you call it a game? It's art, you know." And then eventually, the label kind of grew on me, and I started thinking about what games are, and they're not—they're more than just you know, entertainment. They're experiences and basically art, you know. Yeah, absolutely. So, well, video games—that's yeah. uh, something that I've held for a while—is that. Video games really are the most evolved form of art that exists because it takes yeah. every form of art and yeah. media that existed before and forces it in one uh, concise format. You you know look at any AAA game, you know all of graphic design, uh, typography, you know so the you know the the older disciplines, um, just classic drawing styles and uh, um, you know classically trained art stuff. That all plays into you know the build up, the process, the content that we see, music, uh, sound effects, voice acting, actual acting. Then gets into even some of the more meta sort of things like mm -hmm. the quality of the animations that the animators are doing to represent what the characters are doing to actually make them feel expressive. I mean, all, everything that makes a, a you know really good solid. You know, not even just a triple A game, but really any game. It's taking a lot of what we know from all the other forms of art, plus technology, and putting it into a place where it can be uh, played and enjoyed. Though, mm -hmm. I don't know, I've always felt weird that there's this limitation that you have to have the right operating system and the right software to be able to, you know, play everything. So, there's, I, I feel like. NES games on emulators are gonna potentially last longer than some of the the flash games we've seen these days. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, so it's finished loading here. I see you've got a uh, creepy little bunny there trying to uh, get you some support. That's pretty cool. All right, so we're gonna get into it. Audio is not overwhelming people here. Oh, it really makes you want to have to click not now or donate. <laughs> what a freaky looking rabbit. The, it's Offender too, right? The, yeah. Yeah, the... I mixed uh, the... Uh, um, it's all frame by frame cartoon animation, like traditional animation. And for the bunnies, it's cute because I rotoscoped my mouth for them because it makes it look weirder. And yeah. the... Yeah, so it's mixed rotoscope and traditional, and it's it's kind of funny because they ta have human mouths and they're talking and they look really cute and weird. Yeah, that's that's a pretty interesting way. So, did you do the um, the voice for this little part here too? Yeah, all of it. Awesome. That was something I never was able to fully get on top of. I was making a lot of games myself. I even did one where I did you know, the art, the music, the voice acting. Well, I, my first few projects I did everything on, but um, I, I never really I guess got far enough and polished enough to be able to uh, you know, make some of the awesome stuff that I've seen here. I, I mean, I've already seen a lot of the cool stuff. And just the idea for the um, um, Offender 2 did did it come from anything in particular? Or was it completely a, a unique idea for the uh, the gameplay mechanic? Um, it kind of evolved. There was uh, Offender One I did, and it, it's really simple and just it's it's a little gamelet. You know, it's not nothing like this. It's a pixel art, and it was like to protest the misrepresentation of aliens in video games. And aliens turn Defender around, and you now abduct, you know, abduct instead of. Defending and 
it, it, it's cute and you're playing in this bunny's nightmare and he's afraid of being abducted and then his friends are being pulled out of their beds and then the last level when you're about to win he's he gets pulled out of his bed you know and then <laughs> I thought let's make a sequel to that and it's not pixel art and it's cartoon and uh, then you know like just the some the idea of the last one abducting rabbits it became this here so it kind of evolved you know I see now, something that we had uh, talked about at E3, the hand, the kind of twitching alien hand there, it's definitely very reminiscent of the, the Warcraft uh, severed hand that was used for the, uh, the orc's uh, mouse pointer. It's pretty cool. So I see the text is still going here. It's, it's definitely gone well beyond the relevant stuff, and it's just... Uh, Oh uh, yeah, he um, the scrolly text is like he's paid by the word. So after if you stay there long enough, he'll just revert to lore Ips and you just click to make it go on. <laughs> and he starts talking about his whatever problems in life. And nice. And after you skip that, there'll be the intro animation plays, you know, there's this little animation of bunnies, yay, and stuff, and you, um, you can, it'll give you the idea what the background of the game, and you can skip it by pressing play if you want to forward through it. The idea of that game is that, like I said, aliens are angry at the misrepresentation of how, in video games, so they made making games to, you know, show how to properly present them, and here you play a alien abducting rabbits because he just wants to show love and it turns into all out war and chaos yeah. and <laughs> splat <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so you're saying all of them have the the rotoscope mouth or was it just that <laughs> one no all, all of them that's awesome <laughs> oh, poor alien. Poor bunny too. All right. So what does what give us here? That's that'll give you the tutorial like, how to play the game. He's he'll be your um officer in charge and he debriefs you and it's cute because you know the game has a lot of easter eggs so there's a bomb in the middle of the room he won't let you touch it and uh, you can turn him off and he gets sucked into his tube and then you can blow up the tutorial and there just won't be any more tutorials in the game you know <laughs> that's pretty funny <laughs> Dies, and sometimes you go to heaven. So if I need health, I can try to kill him. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah, like, um, they fight back, and uh, if you uh, your health gets low really easily, especially later in the game, and then you can bomb them and collect their souls for health. Gotcha. If you want to skip it, it's kind of like a room. You go to the exit, and it takes yeah, you back up. Yeah, I saw that up. there. It's pretty cool. So we're gonna get going. I like that hand snapping. It's definitely uh, it. It has that kind of rotoscoped cartoony kind of look to it. Very, uh, very nice. You can't change the name, can you? Uh, it, it's randomly generated. It kind of makes up, it takes a vowel and that other thing and makes something that's sort of pronounceable. It's, it's cute because it's, the stuff it come, creates is really funny. You can't, you can't change it yourself. It just, it's generated. The game was made for mobile, so you know you can tell from the screen dimensions and how it plays. So you know. All right. 
I see. So you just keep on clicking through and you get different ones. <laughs> Neat. Alright. Let's get into some gameplay here, everybody. Well, first you get to see the intro. So the point of the game here, folks, is to try to get them really high up before you actually suck them in and that's how you get more points so you also don't want to let too many of them escape because if they escape you lose points so it's a matter of and balancing like how high you want to get them versus sorry go ahead also if you want to play faster you just abduct them lower because it, 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 the first level is really easy on you Later on, there's like a kamikaze bunny, and if you try to pull him up too high, he blows up on you. So you start paying attention to the types of bunnies you're abducting and all that. Gotcha. So you really can just kind of stay towards the edge and move up and down, at least initially, to uh, just kind of grab But I can see there's the spawn camper uh, penalty. Is that just no point, or do you also not get a, a grab for it? It's no points and doesn't count as a abduction. Cool. Alright. Perp level 2. Good, good. Got a thousand... No bonus, thousand damage. Or no damage, thousand bonus, rather. <laughs> Alright. Let's continue. Get more bunnies. <laughs> it's cute too like with the name thing the game doesn't really let you game over if you die too often it just eventually changes your name to I suck and some kind of random insult so <laughs> you know it's more it's just a pride thing and then you have to argue with the game that no you don't suck and you know <laughs> that's pretty funny <laughs> right, so where can I actually see my health represented at the bottom, at the left of the screen. It's oh. one of the things that I, I was noted I need to change is not numbers, but more visual, you know, but at the moment it's at the bottom left. I gotcha. Yeah, I see that's where the score and everything's at. Mm -hmm. It's, I guess it's, it's kind of easy for people to kind of miss what's going on over there because most of the action kind of goes on lower down there, but not all the way at the bottom. It's things kind of going up from there. So the, the, the turtle shell is a tank. Yeah, like, uh, oh yeah, okay, I see. Um, he, they're gonna bring out the boss now, and the idea is that he's gonna be puking on you, because they're fighting about which is the forward button, and so they're going back and forth, and then they get sick, and he they start throwing up at you, and you have to dodge the puke, it gets stuck on the screen. And very careful not to touch it. You use your beam to knock it back down at them. Gotcha. That's basically what he tells you. Uh, all right. <laughs> I see. So then, when it's upside down, is there something else that I do, or I guess I have yeah, to send more of Yeah, sometimes the... he'll, he'll trip over his stuff, and then you can use a bomb and drop it on him, and What it button does for a bomb? Or is, do uh, I grab it the off top, the hand? Okay. Yeah, you grab it off the hand. Gotcha. I've not been able to get it flip over since that first time. You can see like it lands at the bottom of the screen. Yeah, I mean, you know, the 
it bounces, and that that's when he flips over when it's on the ground. Oh, okay. Well, I guess I won without needing the bomb, apparently. <laughs> I just sent that puke flying back in its face. Alright. Okay, so the boss battle didn't count as a day then. Is it's that... the end of the day. Oh, okay. They sometimes come, you know, like at the end of your day, then it's some battle, you know, to slow you down or make it harder on you. Yeah, I gotcha. Does the no damage bonus work if you are ending the level with 100 health, or does it only work if you don't take any damage whatsoever during the entire level. I think it's if you end the level with 100 health. Okay. So I could potentially try to heal if I got hit to uh, top off. So I see there's also a time limit, so if you don't abduct enough within the time, you're also over? It just uh, starts taking out of your score. It doesn't, ri it doesn't kill you, it just takes your score back counts down to zero, so you know, it just gives you a little panic. Gotcha. Send your puke back down at you there. <laughs> oh, oops. Drop the bomb. Yeah. Oh, and it flipped over again. Oh, damn, I missed that opportunity. But this this boss is going to be kind of a regular thing for the, the next few levels, I take it, or...? He comes at random. Uh, you could play the game without him coming at all. It's, it's, uh, ran it's He come, appears at random. In your case, he's appearing every time. <laughs> Neat. That's fine. It's more points, isn't it? Yeah. From watching people play, I've gotten quite a bit of feedback on how to improve at the uh, boss battle. Is one of the things I want to fix, like because uh, you have to wait for him to throw up at you. So I, I want to do it so that you could trigger it somehow, you know. Gotcha. So I see some folks complaining that I don't have the uh, the chat bot going. So let me get that rolling here. They like to play games while they watch games. It's pretty cool. <laughs> Alright, let's continue. Now, I don't want to spend all of the time on this game because you've got a bunch of other games. I definitely want to check them all out. But this definitely, it, you know, it seems like one that's got at least a decent amount of gameplay. And I saw there's a top yeah. 10, so does it actually record the names of the, the best users? Oh uh, no, it's just for you, unfortunately, because it was a mobile game, so I wanted to make it as personal as possible. The, you, uh, when you start, the names on it are after, you know, M. Hamill, F. Ford, you know, Star Wars uh, yeah. cast, and it's cute because the top ten is scrolling credits screen, and it turns into credit movie credits, then, and you play a little bunny that has to save your bunny friends from the aliens in the top ten, and every bunny you save goes into a retry for the main game so that it kind of works together. It's a, it's an easter egg uh, mini game. Nice. Very cool. Well I think I'm actually going to go back to the main site and then move on to another game here because we've seen I think enough of Offender 2 for people to get the idea of it here. So definitely fun and I see you've got an away page on uh, on Tetrageddon. So when people aren't here, it just kind of goes to this. Now, w was there was there anything inspiring this, or anything you used for the uh, the reference for the the character in the lower left, or is it just kind of silly freehand pixel art that you came up with? It's by a uh, brother. Ah. <laughs> so he looks like an ogre, huh? <laughs> <laughs> If, um, I wanted like something that's like the everyday internet guy, so there. 
That works, but I think he's dressed a little fine for the uh, for the internet. <laughs> like that that collar and what appears to be a necktie. That's a little too formal, I think, for the uh, the flashing red and white screen. You know, internet is serious business. This is true. Internet is serious business. I can't argue with you there. Okay, returning to menu. That monkey in his uh, uh, straight jacket. <laughs> That's what it is, right? It's a monkey in a straight jacket? Uh huh. Or uh, I, I wanted it to be a straight jacket, but you could kind of interpret it as a lab coat. So, you know, he goes both crazy and scientist, depending. The first time I saw it, I thought it was like a, a karate gi he was wearing, actually. Because <laughs> the, the, the darkness towards the bottom kind of looks like the, the little belt wing dangling belt. there. Yeah. But either way, it's a, a... It's a very diverse character. Kung Fu crazy lab monkey. That could be your next game. There you <laughs> go. <laughs> Alright, let's get on to the next one here. They came from my inbox. Spam, spam, spamity spam. Wonderful spam. I don't like spam. <laughs> Epic explosion. Nice. <laughs> That's a funny way to introduce a game. Ah. Uh. I really hope this track doesn't cause the uh, the audio to get messed up with the uh, the recording, cause it's an awesome funky track, but I feel like I've heard it before. The uh, copyright business. The other side of cyberspace. In this uh, main menu, you can also talk to the little spam guy at the, you know, the top right, there's a little input field and he'll talk back and try to sell you things. <laughs> That's funny. They have a uh, pent software ready for installation. <laughs> <laughs> so I see you can uh, have some so the character on the left here is that your brother again yeah I, I, you know the it, when, in Mac when you do uh, the used to be the distortion thing so we were fooling around and I thought yeah that's probably how spammer would look you know all weird and green and zombie like and with a funky face yeah there you go so how I game device of caution, cast device, fingers antenna, firm grooves enabled. <laughs> Did you ever actually own one of those giant brick of a phones? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty funny. That combo on the keypad. <laughs> Who got game? <laughs> Interesting.
interesting way to represent the top 10. That's actually pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah, like they're the heroes for playing the game. <laughs> Tater, the blow tato. Uh, Sido, which sound effect are you talking about? That might have been a little while back now, three minutes ago. Alright, let's get into the game then. Oh yeah, the thing about all these games also is that they're... It's an open source arcade, so all of the stuff here is completely open source and you can go and any code or graphical assets you like, you can go and use it and make your own game out of it. Nice. So what were all of these coded in? Uh, it's a mix. Some of them are HTML5 and most of them are Flash, but I'm trying to diversify and make more HTML5 content for people to use, you know? I getcha. So this will run on mobile devices and stuff just fine? Um, th these are actually as apps, so you can go and download them for your mobile too. Nice. That's pretty cool. So this is this has kind of gotten around a bit, and this has I'm sure gotten you a lot of experience with kind of deploying on multiple platforms and kind of all the formatting and all that sort of issues, right? Yeah, very much so. That's pretty cool. That's it's definitely a um, kind of a, I would say looking at where things were going about five years ago, HTML5 looked like it was going to be the thing for the internet. It, it doesn't seem like it's quite the thing anymore because like it's it's definitely big and upcoming but I feel like a little bit of everything is starting to kind of get in the mix now yeah, um, yeah. like unity has been getting really big and it's been getting around everywhere uh, you know other stuff has been kind of getting popular too so it's it's definitely cool to be you know able to deploy things everywhere and be able to have that experience and it, I, I guess is it something that um, you're planning to do with all of your uh, future upcoming projects, or um, is it something that you were mostly specific, specifically looking to do for uh, Tetragedon? At the moment, I'm working on becoming a PlayStation developer so I can get this on PlayStation. Ooh. It's important for me that as many people have as much access to it as possible, that it runs everywhere and anyone can view it. That's why it's also free, because I didn't want money to get in the way of people playing it or affording it, you know. And right. But the thing about, you know, develop, making sure it runs everywhere is that the a mobile you can't really make an in mobile browser game that'll work perfectly. Mobile is more of an app platform, you know, and there's a lot there's a lot of things and conditions you have to I I tried to really make sure that the websites themselves are run on mobile, but they also look good in a browser like the HTML5 site Tetragon that you're visiting now, it runs on mobile, or at least it should run generally on most of the devices, you know, so it was a lot of testing and patience involved in getting it to work as broadly as possible. Nice. Very cool. So I'm not sure if I was supposed to get more spams or less spams there, or the more clicks or less clicks, but... He, he, uh, those are your lives, that's how much you have left, and the okay. point is to avoid being deleted. Ah. Cat's green, avoid red. The thing about this game is, that, and I kind of like about it, is that every level is a different game. You know, it's not like one 
mechanic, it constantly switches up on you. So it's keeping it confusing. It's a little bit like a, you're, just, you're kind of just going with it and it's fun and keeps switching up on you and keeps you humorously confused. I gotcha. I actually like that sort of thing. I had done a game a while back where it was like some amount of platforming, some amount of like bird's eye action, some amount of basically space invaders, and like it, it kind of rotated between those for every level. Um, I can see this one's kind of difficult because you gotta you gotta hit the green one when you're at the very edge, and it's uh, kind of hard to anticipate. I think. Hooray! <laughs> oh wow, I saw it. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, it was uh the the red bright red flashes that I was seeing there for a moment that I was like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Looks so freaky, I love it. <laughs> there are two ninjas. Oh, wait, is this awesome? That seems like a trick question. <laughs> so that's where that power up graphic comes in. Uh -huh. Do you dare pit your sanity against our marathon of fright? Shock follows shock. Your breath comes in gasps, hearts fall. You're you're right, Caesar. I should probably put a photosensitivity warning. For the Oh no, the brain is squished. I don't know what I was supposed to do there, but I got zero points at it. Uh, the idea is you close the zombie windows before they reach brain ICO. It, 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 they go faster and faster as you close them, so there's no real way of winning. You just get points out of it. I'll go with swag. <laughs> cool, so this gets into the top 10 stuff. Nice. So actually, we've already seen this, so I'm just gonna kind of move it along here. <laughs> so do I just click back, or is there a way to actually navigate back from the page here? You have to click back. Cool. All right. All right. See, it's not even click back. It was just a, a separate page. It opens. All right. Moving on here. Um, so I guess, uh, something that I want to ask about, and I'll, I'll kind of get into it when we get into the next game here, the Gatekeeper, which it, it, I thought was funny, I played it last night a little bit, um, I like this loading screen for it, the burger was to die for, <laughs> so... What um what I guess are your plans going forward with uh, Tetragedon? You said you want to be getting it on PS4. Are you also looking at any other platforms like um any uh rather than NES? Excuse me, Nintendo like um uh, Wii U or possibly uh, 360 or um oh yeah um any other places or 
is it mostly just the, the PS4 focus for right now? Well, the thing about that is I'm the only one working on it, so I have to take it a step at a time. Right now, it's uh, PlayStation. I was looking at Wii, but I decided PlayStation because it was most... I have a PlayStation, it just made sense to, you know, but... And then I wanted to do Nintendo, but at the, when I was looking at it, it seemed like it was going to be really expensive to be a developer. Now I heard it's not, but... You know, so it's one system at a time that I'm doing and see how what develops where, you know. Gotcha. And I guess the other thing with Nintendo is they... I don't know if all of the um, uh, the profanity and stuff would necessarily fly with them. They usually end up having more family-friendly stuff. Not to say mm-hmm. they don't have things that have a, you know, a little bit more edge to them, but... Uh, I don't know. I think they would probably ask for maybe a slightly watered down version of some of this stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, to do that with the App Store, take out some of the profanity and, you know, calm it down a bit. Gotcha. For, um, now, what App Stores? Is this Android? Is this um, iOS uh- or both? It, all of it is on iOS, and I would, and some of it is on Android already. I, I'm in the process of when I have time, port a game. You know, it's slowly trickling in. It's all free on Android. On iOS, it's often for pay. I have things where I set them for free for a day or like you know, whenever sporadically. But gotcha. yeah, they both. Cool. So. We're going to get into the gatekeeper here. Now, I found this to be hilarious because you play it for long enough and you realize it's basically a perfect play of tic-tac-toe and there's no way... You can only lose. You can never actually win. <laughs> so, was that was that basically the idea of the game? Or is it is it meant that people will just kind of throw themselves at it until they uh, get bored of continuing to try to win their character's way into heaven here. It's very rare, but you can win. But that's super, super rare. There was one girl at E3, she won the first time playing, and everyone else who played it kept losing, you know? And But uh, the thing behind it is that, you know, it's uh, the character they're playing against is smack-talking you and acting all tough about, you know, winning and it, it's cute because, you know, like, people will spend hours on this and the guy's like, what did you do? I missed a meeting. Oh, hey, I'm about to win. Morning on it. <laughs> oh, whoops, never mind. I let them win. <laughs> Not bad. I guess I didn't need to block that angle. But yeah, I was uh, I was definitely playing last night and not having any uh, not having any progress one way or another. It was basically just oh yeah, we're putting everything in the right place and nobody gets to win. But that's um, this is most of what the game is, folks. So if you want to play tic tac toe, <laughs> this is this is where it's at. So I guess for the aesthetic, the the fire, the uh, well, this little fuzzy critter here. Like, how did you, um, how did you go about making the the art and the design for them? Uh, this particular one, uh, my sister helped did helped me with it. You know, like uh, my idea was I wanted to have this old school video kind of. You know, a DOS game, and they started having video looking effect, effects yeah. in it and stuff. So. It was cool because she wanted to help out, so we both made this. There are a couple games where I actually had help. Most of it is me, but you know, like the there's a Tetris one that you play. Uh, an alien wanted to take out his vengeance on humans or anger on humans and decided to play Tetris over a city so you're squishing people with Tetris blocks. <laughs> nice. That's awesome. So that's that's the gatekeeper everybody. <laughs> All right. Hexed by megahertz. Interesting. Let's get into this. By the way, everybody, there's there's all sorts of little descriptions and other things to check out on this website. So, you know, don't just look at the games. Just go and check it out for yourselves here at tetrageddon.com. 
It is free, it is open source, you can learn from it and make other awesome games from the stuff here. Um, pretty cool stuff. It's just a really awesome project in general. And I gotta say, it's definitely, you know, people will say that something is more indie or less indie or whatever. This is definitely like <laughs> full on straight up indie sort of stuff here. Very, very, you know, having fun with it sort of stuff. Oh wow, nice control scheme. <laughs> <laughs> So do I? Can I actually use a controller for this? No, it's not going to ask you to be a rocket scientist. It's like a. <laughs> there was one game on uh, PlayStation Three, and they threw a control scheme at me that I thought looked like this. So I thought, oh my god, I have to make something like that. So yeah. And of course, even even the the text and the way things are written play with an eye at the end. Knows how I got score. Funny stuff. Next mini bite. He leaked information. Feed him hurts before all the data vanishes. Hold a drag for the light. Alright, let's get into it here. to just you, just uh, you know, knocking things over and dragging basically. It, it works, it's really cute, it plays well on the Wii. Nice. So you have gotten some of the stuff on the Wii, it's just, I guess, is it the, the cost of actually getting the stuff on the console that, um... Oh, it's just it's just the browser, but I, I, I originally looked into being a Wii or a Nintendo developer, and like it looked like it was gonna cost thousands or something just to be registered. I don't know. They changed since that was a, quite a while ago, you know. So I never looked back into it since until uh, the, you know the Indicate and E3 event where there were other developers there, and they were like, oh yeah, it's not that bad, you know. And, yeah. and I mean Nintendo was there at uh, Indicate, so. I know they were trying to uh, promote and get indie developers and stuff on board, so... Yeah, I mean, it seems like every all the, the major consoles have been trying to uh, cater more towards the, the indie community. It's definitely been a very good thing. I think this is the level that's going to end me, because I could only get about 300 the past two levels. <laughs> Interesting between the levels. Oh wow. This uh the email list in the background there, that definitely makes things distracting. <laughs> Sometimes he does not uh, lunges at them and yeah, hits them himself. Just want to read the emails. Yeah, crap. 
<laughs> Game win! Weird dancing bird. Is this more gameplay or is this the end of it? It's uh more. Nice. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> is also a bonus level, like you have three minutes to score as many points as possible before the world ends. Kind of. Many of the games have that, like you think you won and then suddenly a totally different game comes and kind of blows up in your face. And Goodness, I had myself. Uh, does this add on to the total score then? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, it, 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 if, I don't know if it was muted when I said this, but definitely has the look of like uh, Wolfenstein or Doom, one of those kind of games. Uh -huh. With the uh, switch, and there's. Sure. Go ahead. The, um, some of the graphics were drawn from that, like, thing you're shooting from. I can't remember. I think it was Wolfenstein that I. Uh, yeah. Took through that from like you know wanted it to look like uh, <laughs> some ridiculous old school shooter. Nice. Enter your name, Gur. I like Gur. That works pretty well. C'est quasiment sûr que nous avons affaire à un serial killer. What the hell? <laughs> Nice. And this looks like it's actually saving multiple people's scores, not just the uh, the local score. Yeah, this particular game, it's from a database. I had all my games doing a database, and then I took out the database because I thought personalized was better, but now I think I want to put the da having it from a database again, you know, so... This one is, a, is from online. I'm hosting it and have the setup for it, so... Okay. I see LLL is at the top there. <laughs> um, like third from the top. Well, awesome. Cool. So, let's keep on going here and check out some more of these awesome games. And we are back to the main page. I like that you've got that kind of away version, so when somebody's finished with the game, they come back and get to see that. It's pretty cool. Huh, return to Van Um Let's see. Projects is is Tetra getting pretty much what you're working on for the next little bit, or do you have another project that you're uh, looking to get going pretty soon? Already got started. Um, Tetra I think is what I'm going to be working on for quite a while. The thing about it is that there are like many games put into one game. 
the idea is I want to make it so it's a 3D arcade that you actually walk around in and explore games in it and there's like the, what I'm thinking about for the PlayStation release of it is that you're in an environment it's a 3D arcade that's also sort of a world it's a, it's a, it's more of a story that ties all the games together and then you play the games and there would be more interaction between the games at that point but you know I'm, I'm always building on it and enhancing it and so basically yeah that uh, that's what I'm doing gotcha so somebody's asking uh, a couple questions one of them is how long did it take you to finish the project and the other is are you going to add more to it I feel like I, I might know the answer, so I'm going to take a guess and let you uh, 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 clarify or tell me how wrong I am. How long did it take you to finish the project? You're not finished with the project yet, so you really can't put a date on it. But this seems like it's been the work of maybe, uh, I don't know, a couple of years or so, maybe more? Yeah, a few years. Uh, uh, under 2 game, it took me about a year to make because a uh, traditional frame-by-frame -frame animation and all the voice acting is a lot more refined than the other games. Uh, like the Hacks by Murgahertz took about three months. I actually just finished another game. I, I released it the day before yesterday. It's called Froggy. That one took... Nice. I, st I started in August and just so... You, you get the idea. The I mean, I like to say, yeah, I do it overnight, you know, I just I finish really fast, you know, but there's a lot of animation and then the coding and then this music work that's involved and it's quite a bit for just one person to do, you know, so yeah, it, it's been, I've been working on this for years. People don't realize it takes a lot of effort to wrangle those pixels. You don't just do like a quick hand-drawn version and then, okay, rasterize, like, yeah. <laughs> it's not that easy. It really isn't. Actually, the uh, the first project that I did where we had a pixelated character, we we had the artist design the full art version, the full like hand drawn, and then um, squish that into the um, the the 48 by 32 pixel proportions and pixelize that character, and it turned out great actually. Um, but that's basically doing the art twice once to you know have the aesthetic and then a second time to actually make it look the style so it, it it made sense to do that back in the you know the 80s and you know before when you didn't have the kind of fidelity that we have with the screens 1920 by 1080 resolution so it really was having the cleanest art you could and then trying to represent it as best as possible with pixels um, yeah pixel art it's no joke <laughs> I should find it a little harder than other arts often like the you make something that's really tiny so it actually has to look recognizable and I don't know you know the limited amount of pixels you're using and uh, so you have to cut detail add detail in weird places just to make it look like a representation of a frog or a person or whatever you know yeah absolutely so I'm gonna load up the game here um, is this Spacecom? <laughs> crazy Cat in the Tinfoil Hat Area. Or maybe not Crazy Cat, Evil Plotting Cat, more like it. <laughs> so, the other question was are you going to add more to it? Now you had already said about wanting to turn it into the um, basically 3D. The, yeah, the 3D walk around uh, arcade experience sort of thing. But then are you also going to be adding more games, more content, other music, other aesthetics? Are there going to be characters in the arcade like the um, the, 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 the muscle head dude with the, the little mushroom or uh, you know the you know who I'm talking about that one funny character. Yeah, um, the idea is that I want to make the arcade so it's like uh, you're on Earth after the apocalypse and the only thing that's left is this weird arcade and then you know you, you take it from there. There's characters and things and the games tied together and. Gotcha. And yeah, I wanna I'm I'm 
like I said, I just released another game. I want to keep making games that kind of build on it, you know, little pieces. Nice. So that'll be cool. So I guess you're going to leave space in the or in the uh, arcade for more games, or are you going to have, like, different rooms that are kind of sectioned off, and once you have enough games, the, the door opens up and you can get in there sort of thing? Yeah, something like that. I haven't really thought about how to design the environment yet. I just have concepts because I... 3D would be really new to me, so I would have to go through the process of learning Unity and uh, modeling and all that. Which sounds like another, like, potentially three to six months of uh, uh, work and <laughs> stuff, but... Uh -huh. Definitely worthwhile. Like everything that you're doing here continues increasing your your skill set as a as an artist and a developer. So it's really awesome. It's it's definitely something that a lot of people don't really get into as much. So I'm sure the sound is starting to get to people here. So I'm just gonna Woo yes, please. That was a Homer woohoo I heard. <laughs> the year is 20 XX. Here is the state of economic, social, political, and such economic chaos as never seen before. Nuclear war is finally inevitable. The communists have won. In a desperate attempt to save what's left of humanity and civilization, the governments of the world hire some of the Earth's top scientists to devise a way to upload a copy of the human race into cyberspace. The project was a success. Too much of a success. Due to the human nature, the cyberspace was revealed for my spammers, scammers, SEO noobs, bloggers, chatters, using it, camp horses, and a thriving porn district. Measures have to be taken to keep things in check. And the last remains of their waning powers, the great Adams established an internet standards body called Spacecom. An elite force of assholes blessed with a minor amount of administrative privileges. These men were called space commanders. With their limited understanding of social interaction, these brave cyber soldiers were put to work in securing the internet. <laughs> There were a lot of memes in there. There are a lot of memes and a lot of references. That's really cool. I like the uh, the intro here, the uh, the pixel art of the gun shooting behind the uh, the text there. That's really awesome. Did did you draw those and then kind of frame it up for the text, or did you have the text first and then just do the pixel art inside of it? Uh, it drew it first, and the text is just a mask over it. So, it's uh, they're also this is these are animations used in other parts of the game. Like they're the game constantly gets interrupted with little animations of like guys shooting or you know it's kind of like I design it wanting to be like a comic animation that you're interacting with. So there's panels and you know. Gotcha. Well, let's check out the cast real quick before we get into it. Dude, they came from <laughs> Flying Bacon. Chunky Chupacabra. Burger. Those are all, uh, that's the, out to the top ten again. Yeah. Impact steak. <laughs> Big tube. Nice. All right, let's get into it here, everybody. Telecommunications incoming transmission. Throughout the uh, 
apparently the interwebs that I see as the background there. So that's uh, this is kind of an interesting way to represent internet as space and I guess the solution to Earth being taken over by communists. Was that was that right? Yeah, the communists won, and nuclear war was inevitable to save humanity. Scientists uploaded it into cyberspace, so that's the result: is uh, hackers and game gamers and uh, madness, and you know, you know, like just imagine what would happen if we really all lived on the internet physically. Like that's our existence. I mean, that's basically <laughs> what we're doing anyway. But you know, to actually like, live in the digital internet. I, I like this idea here a lot. Um, because I wanted to um, eventually someday I want to make an adventure game that's a, a, little, a lot more refined than this, but the, still the same idea as space commanders and they're cleaning up the internet and uh, fighting all the weird Twilight Zone things that happen on the internet. <laughs> awesome. It seems like the first item you would need in that is a. Um, uh, some sort of a shield so that way you can uh, keep yourself from being blinded by the horrible images of the internet and then uh, you have to actually kind of attack around the things while there's the, the sensor bubble around them. Yeah, like funny things like that. I was thinking like there would, it would be a really cool, cute story if like so there's you know they're in a the spaceship and then suddenly the crew there's some kind of weird entity there that makes the crew not safe for work. So you know like if, uh, if you would get zapped by it and you're like um, you know that when these things are censored on TV it's like this pixely thing. So yeah. You're, you're totally pixelated. It looks like it looks dirty but it's not. But, you know like it's all just pixelated. So your mind fills in the blanks. It turns it, you know, like really silly scenarios like that. You know? Okay, you know that actually reminds me of two things. There's one is uh, there's a Magic the Gathering card from the uh, the joke set unglued called censored and it was a bunch of like black sensor bars and things kind of pixeled out um you couldn't really tell what was going on in the scene so you couldn't tell you know, if it was something dirty or not um and then the other was there was actually a uh, a music video edit sort of thing someone took one of the songs from uh, the count from uh, uh sesame street or was he the muppets definitely one or the other and bleeped a bunch of words mm -hmm. in a way that it, you know, they weren't inappropriate words, but the way they were bleeped, it made it sound inappropriate. So I could definitely see that sort of stuff uh, being used to, to, to kind of make things funny like that for the, uh, uh, for that idea, for that game there. Neil Patrick Harris says, use your keyboard for this shit. Like a boss. Up, down, space. So this is this is a game within the game sort of thing. Yeah, this one is it's cute cuz I released it then later as a professional uh it, it sells itself as a industry standard professional hexing tool. It's, it even has it has its own <laughs> website. So, and the website's really formal and it talks about the technology used for hexing and you know it has testimonials, fake testimonials. It's cute, you know. And it reminds me of the Matrix from the SNES Shadowrun game. I don't know if you uh, played that one at all, um, but the, it definitely like squares you're trying to get through and not trying to get exploded by the bad stuff. Now I, I'm trying to find my way through here, and it seems like where I think I'm able to go and where I can actually go aren't always uh... when the the ones that are uh, vertical you can only go left and right and wait the ones that are horizontal you can only go left and right the ones that are vertical you can only go up and down okay so I'm, I've been trying to go up here when this one goes um, like that but I haven't been able to at the uh, you'll see in a second hmm Oops. Hmm. 
But yeah, it's uh, definitely an interesting idea for a, uh, a game, and I, I, I'm definitely not sold on it being a professional hacks tool, but I definitely like the idea of it. Oh, I see. It's not just the angle, but it's also the direction they're moving that limits where you can go. Mm -hmm. But I can't move off to the right there. Weird. Hmm. It's like you can only go on the tiles, and the tiles, if they're pointing up, you can only move up or down, and if the tiles are flat, you can only go left or right, so you have to wait for the right tile to appear also. I see. Yeah, I was, I, I've been trying to do that, but it doesn't, not every time does it uh, seem like it moves how I how I expect it to move here, like I'm trying to, uh, there, that time I was able to go. Or maybe I'm mistaken in how it works, yeah, I was mistaken in how it works, I see. Is that you're kind of going off the edges. Whoops. <laughs> I'll eventually get it. Does it? I guess it redraws constantly, so it's doesn't really matter how the level starts. It's going to constantly be changing. Looks like mm -hmm. neat. Professional hacking. Once again, if this was the Matrix from Shadowrun for SNES, this would be a uh, a good training tool, I think. Ah, oh, crap. This particular game is pretty unforgiving. I was thinking of adding something like health to it or, you know, to make it easier on people because for a game in a game, it's a little, it gets in the way a little, like it stops the flow. So like, like you're having a trouble with it, you know, for the standalone version, it's okay if it's really hard, but yeah, um, I have a set of notes I still need to implement from the indie exchange and all the feedback I've been getting. Gotcha. Looks like I'm almost there. Just need to get the right rotation on one of these here. Hmm. Yeah, I see. It's getting to that final spot's going to be a little challenging because you've got to have it flowing the right way for you. Mm -hmm. Got to wait till the one on the right rotates, basically. Hmm. So there's there's no music here just because this one's kind of like a, a mini game sort of thing. Yeah, like you're at the terminal now and you're hacking to get, regain control of your ship. That's the idea. Gotcha. Two hundred fifty nine seconds and six tries. Would you like to submit this hack or try again? Yeah, let's submit it. That's fine. This is going to bring us to the end, then? It's the next level. Oh, okay. The big guy. Working on all of these games, they're all very different. It was a... They, I take you know, like the opportunity to experiment a little bit and see how I can make something completely different and sometimes they're not really playable at first, like, you know, like it takes a lot of refining and work then and feedback to get it to, like, uh, be a better game and all that. I mean, like, I, I like experimenting and so they're all very unusual. It's not everyone's thing, but, you know, when people like it, they really like it, so that's cool. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's great, but I could definitely see how people would maybe find it a little too abrasive, or they, they've they only played, like, AAA console FPS games their entire life, so anything that isn't that doesn't seem like as much of a game to them for whatever reason. But yeah, this this the moment that I first saw it at uh, E3, I was like, wow, this is, this is definitely awesome. I'm definitely glad to have you on here to be able to kind of talk about it a bit more. Learn about it a bit more too, because it's pretty cool. It's definitely a uh, very awesome, totally like the, the, the full indie spirit kind of going for a project like this. This is everything that, that kind of 
the the especially like kind of underground indie for the sake of indie sort of thing kind of makes me think of so it's it's totally awesome stuff you've got going on here <laughs> that's a big old pile of meat holy crap <laughs> exploded. Mega meat attack. Infinite retries. <laughs> that always helps. Q1 rocket. Boss. 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 Giblets. Fire. MP. Hit by a giblet. Rocket Q will be reset. Guide rocket to the boss. Okay. Rocket. <laughs> so you've got the uh, now that's that would be something to uh, uh, offer for players is the ability to reverse their pitch on the uh, the guidance bar because a lot of people uh, the up is down down is up thing doesn't quite work for them or maybe leave oh, yeah. it like that. No, I like that idea. Like you could have settings where it some joke settings in there too, and you can adjust stuff like this. That that would be cute. I'm not doing a good job missing these meats. You can use your, you have this EMP blast, so when the meat comes down, you shoot it, but when oh, there's I no see. meat, you trigger, trigger the rocket. Gotcha. There, that worked. Oh yeah, oh now it's deploying the next rocket. Whoops. <laughs> Does it taste like bacon? Good question. So you basically have to go two cycles to hit this time and then three cycles and then something like that I'm guessing? Or it's just one cycle, you trigger it when there's no meat and then you fight off the meat using your blast. You can uh, even when the rocket is triggered, you can use a blast like just mouse one to oh, okay. shoot the meat. I guess how do I ready a rocket? When when he doesn't have meat, then you press mouse one again, and it'll count down to a rocket. Oh, okay. Then it's done. Now, does it take the um, the position from where you're at to where the the rocket originates, or it always kind of comes from the same vector, regardless of where you're at on the screen? It always comes from the same area. Okay. Looks like it fires off at two seconds. <laughs> the missile flying music is pretty funny. <laughs> this makes me stabby, is what he says. Oh, whoops. Go away! <laughs> Got hit too many times there. That's funny. Of course.
course, all of the uh, internet stuff flying around in the background there. So once again, this was uh, I can I can see you've just kind of got the solid image for most of it, and you're just kind of animating the ed edges of the uh, the character there. Yeah, th th that's uh, just to corner cut because you know I don't want to do mouth movements and uh, here in this case I didn't want to spend the time on making him look really nice and animated well. Yeah. You know, if this was full size and animated well, it would actually probably have the uh, the 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 style and appeal of like some of those giant bosses from uh, Fantasy Star. If you ever, uh, yeah, that was that was one of the things I always thought was awesome about that series of games is that the boss fights. It's this giant screen filling boss. Like you're you're not just fighting some little thing the same size as you that's got twenty twenty times as many hit points. It's a boss. You know, it's it's big. So I definitely like, you know, this is literally a planet of meat that I'm shooting missiles at right now. <laughs> did you um did you have a model of any sort that you used for the um the the characters in this or are you just kind of freehanded or people you know or so, uh People characters are based on the 90s action movie guys because, you know, that's cool. So the, the, <laughs> you can recognize, like, one of them looks kind of like Arnold, uh, another looks like Stallone in the animation. So it's like if you really are into 90s action movies, you're probably like, ah, look what you did. You know, like, you probably get it. It's like, it's over. It's supposed to be, like, trying really hard to be hardcore. I gotcha. I gotcha. <laughs> Final <laughs> So I'm guessing you have a green bird? A little parrot awesome. Let's see, we have a comment here. No, I agree, but people don't appreciate games like this where the art and the passion is the most important things. Uh, either you get tired of AAA games happening now, they appreciate games like this, and we get more of them. That's cool. <laughs> I mean, I think I think it's great. In fact, this this right here, we've now cut to something that it looks like we've a entered a completely different game. Like a, uh, <laughs> it looks very much like either a, a Super Mario IQ Brothers test. or a, um, or it could even be like a JRPG that it's kind of going into from here. But let's see where it actually takes us. You can only accept or accept. I'm guessing both uh, both of them take us to the same place. Uh -huh. And challenges you to an IQ test. You want to hear this guy? Shape does not match with the others. Uh, this one? No. Uh, five miles long, you step someone five miles away with the curvature making it possible. Uh, you know, that only assumes that they're actually on the surface of the Earth and not 500 miles away in the air, so... Uh, the curvature would not make that impossible. Hey, I know more than you. You shut up now. <laughs> I'm guessing there's no right, no right answer with this guy or something? There are, but they're really... It's, it's kind of... You have to wing it. I, I don't. I don't even remember what the right ones for it are. There are, but uh, in the end, he asks you a question that you can't lose, and your points go way through the ceiling. So, it, it's a bonus game I IQ gotcha. test. You you know, you can win them all and get a bunch of points from it, but you don't losing it. Did you eat eight cakes. 
Or are they alive? If so, how many did you really eat? Uh, I don't know, 20? <laughs> Traveling in a car, 10 miles per hour, quarter of the way. Uh, just the giraffe. <laughs> I don't know if that was correct or not. This <laughs> is just some sort of a weird, weird, puzzly or quizzy sort of thing here. I don't know what it is. So I will fit your left. Uh, 90 degrees. No, we didn't like that one. One has a crush on Optimus Prime. Does that make one manly? Apparently, yes to all of them, but I'm guessing only one of them is the right yet. Oh, I see. That's the one that gives you the uh, giant pile of points there. Standard failure. <laughs> it's a dancing steak. You encounter white people. They want you to enter me. They're so amazed. Are you a wizard? <laughs> <laughs> Submit that shit. Alright. <laughs> Love these like the, the, the top tens are probably one of the best things about the games. I like other other than of course the gameplay itself. They're just so entertaining as a way to represent who's uh, who's got the scores for everything. I don't think I've really seen a game do something like that. Did did the idea come from anything in particular, or was that a um, just an original thing that you thought of? I think it was an original. I, I like to believe it was an original thing. Like uh, I thought, it, seeing you know movie how they introduce characters like you know uh, snatch, I think it's a movie snatch but you know that that style style of movie and they're all every character is cool so I thought what if every player had its own representation in that game you know like you're special for playing it so you know has you have give you more motivation to be in the top 10 other than just a really high number you know yeah so you've got this fun little uh Gigapet sort of thing here. The old floppy disk uh, computer on the right. <laughs> Cursor disco. And I'm guessing the hatchets. No, you can't use the hatchets. I'm guessing the hatchets is just there to uh, throw people off then. I panic him because he keeps screaming and then pass out and then, you know, you pet him to wake him back up or see. It's cute. It's also that you, the game ends here basically and uh, the, you have to quit and come back if you want to play again, but the, this is the end of the game. Nice. That's pretty funny. Alright, well, I am going to... The the label for the game at the top of my browser is Neil Patrick Harris. So <laughs> interesting. So it's not just though the the internet. You're kind of taking a little bit of all pop culture and um, mm -hmm. putting it into different parts here. It's sort of like uh, our digital modern age and uh, anything that you know, that coincides with computers and uh, computer culture. It's a mix of all that. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, no, Caesar, I know what you were trying to say. Yeah, it's, um, it's, it's definitely that, you know, this is art. It's just not everybody is uh, awesome enough to be able to appreciate this art. I, I I know what you're trying to say. Because this is awesome. In fact, let's get into original offender here, because I kinda wanted to see what that was about too. 
are you going to have like a Fender and then a Fender 2 next to each other in the arcade or are you going to kind of spread them out mm -hmm. a little bit? It's something that I haven't really decided but I want to have the two kind of work together in some creative fashion or another. Very like cool. if one machine were more broke than or worn out than the other and you know I like that or the um, the the older one having the the wood panels like you'd see on some of the older arcade consoles mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. fun stuff I remember when wood panels used to be the thing <laughs> Let's look at the keys. Nice. That's uh, that's a good way to represent keys. <laughs> this particular game, there's two different versions of it too. There's an HTML5 and Flash version and a tutorial. There's tutorials for a lot of the stuff here, but this one I walk people that are interested through creating an HTML5 game and it's one thing I was trying to do more of is a tutorial for have a tutorial for each game or so, something along those lines so you know if you play a game and you want to make a game then it would give you a starting point of how to get into game development I get you so I see what's going on with this it's more you you just grab up all the bunnies, but it's that you're trying to avoid the planes as they go by. Mm -hmm. That's pretty fun. And a laser shoots, then that's a warning that there's going to be a new guy coming. Yeah. So how long did this one take you? And I guess, where was this in the order of the games that you had been working on? This one took like three days to the one you're playing is three days and uh, it was supposed to be a little Easter egg game that if you in the flash side if you size your browser window too small then suddenly the a game shows up <laughs> so it was it was like a cute little extra to reward some you know like behavior that you might do playing with the site that's pretty cool three days yeah it's it Pretty solid for three days, like basically a game jam, essentially. Yeah. Do you do the global game jams at all? Or any of the other sorts of game I jams? Ne I never had time to get into them. I watch them, I really want to, but you know, I haven't taken the time to do it. Gotcha. Assaulted bunnies, augmented the breath. Next left. Oh, I see. Looks like somebody came through here and uh, actually took the time and effort to do a cheater run because I see one insane, insane, like way over the top score here, which usually only happens when people cheat. So that's that's awesome. That means people actually care about your games enough to go through the <laughs> trouble of cheating in them to be the top score. That's uh, that's pretty awesome, actually. <laughs> Fed them a hairy fajita. Gross. <laughs> Was that the one on the left said e I eat arms? <laughs> the little banter they're having back and forth, the aliens <laughs> at the bottom. That's funny. Look, snail, let's explode it. Alright. So, what was the, the order that the games were actually made in? Do you, um, do you have that handy, or do you remember? Uh, I think one of the first one was uh, hacked by megahertz. Um, yeah, I think that was one of the first ones, and uh, just I kept I, I was working on it on and off, you know, just making games. I never really released them or did anything to it, and then like in uh, 
a couple of years ago, I decided, okay, I'll, I really want to get serious about making games. So I put re I rewrote them and I made fixed them up and I made uh, you know Tetrigen games that released source files and wrote tutorials and you know, and so I got very serious about the project and I've been working away at it and I, I want to get it as far as possible. Gotcha. So is this the only thing that you're normally working on or are you also working on various you know, freelance things and other stuff um, along the way? Yeah, I do web development on the side for to pay for it. And uh, yeah, it's web development or any kind of advertising work that any anything that people send my way, I do that to pay for it. Awesome. Well, everybody here, if you're uh, if you're looking for some awesome graphics and web stuff, uh, you know where to look. You have you have an awesome person right here to uh, to ask about. Just uh, don't be cheap about it because this stuff is cool. <laughs> anyway, so we're gonna get into uh, Haxatron here, which I think we played a little bit earlier as the mini game version. Yeah, also as a note, there's websites for every one of the games, and the websites are cute and different for everyone like the hexatron one if you would look at the site it's it's funny it's you know ridiculous uh, corporate talk do you just put hexatron in at the uh or there's uh, an option saying visit website on all the screens oh okay i'll just do that then visit website Hexatron 2000 is the industry's leading standard for hexing cloud optimizations 2.0 driven responsive design systems websites. Hexatron 2000 version 2.0 now comes with 64 bit and supports touchscreen compatibility, among other features. Hexatron 2000 is the go to training tool to hone hexing reflexes for both beginner and senior hexers. <laughs> Electromagnetic psychial emissions, huh? <laughs> so that's actually the uh, the the app version of it that people were able to see. So you've got the I see up up down left right arrows that people can uh, press. Can they actually touch on the screen itself in the uh, or in the uh, the yeah. gameplay area to move to? Cool. Oh no, not on the desktop version. Just the app uh, for Android and iOS. You just use your you know it's on screen controls. <laughs> cool. Well, let's see. About. Well, we read that. Testimonials. Game Newell. Yeah, it's over to fail attack on a core facility. Hacks try able to identify the hacker as well as mitigating the damage quickly and effectively, efficiently. Commander Spez, the great admin. So it looks like these are these are references to some of your games, mm -hmm. and I'm guessing that's uh, Gabe Newell that you're uh, making a reference there too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's good stuff. Okay. And it's FAQ. FAQing is easy and secure. FAQA requires a few steps. Select the item you'd like to FAQ and click the FAQ now button. <laughs> That's funny. If you prefer to FAQ by phone, you sexy kitten you, please call us toll free 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern. Hmm. I clicked contact and nothing's. Is that like a, an email link or what's contact? Yeah, it's this? just an email link. Oh, okay. I don't know why it's uh, browser's not doing the thing, but oh well. So I yeah, see so you've also got the download source in the upper right. Very cool. Is um, Steam somewhere that you would want to get these games? Yeah, it is. It's definitely. Is it's just uh, I've been watching how people do it. It, se it seems like a lot of work, so it's kind of 
you know, like, because you have to go through the whole green light process and voting and it seems like quite a bit of work. Right. I agree. It is It is a lot of work. We've actually been, uh, uh, Who's Gaming Now has been kind of watching and helping the process for a bunch of folks. And yeah, it's it's not a um, not an instant, easy sort of thing. It's one of those things where if you don't have a, uh, you know, a big name publisher that can just walk up and say, hey, put this game on the market, mm -hmm. that it, you know, has to go through some time and effort and rigors. Uh, have you thought about other places like Desura? Yeah, I have. Um, I haven't looked into how to get it on there yet. You know, like it's it's quite a bit of work. I have to, you know, if I want to keep working on it, I have to uh, schedule my time properly. Like I take a few days to look into. Okay, where can I get this? I make a plan, and right now the plan is PlayStation. It seems the most feasible, and the, you know, like they showed interest in it too. So I have a good feeling about it and it's it's definitely I mean even if they if it doesn't work out I would still have then the project all together in one bundle and update it so I could easily then say okay never mind PlayStation I'll just try Steam you know like but it'll give me a starting point with making a, a standalone uh, product that's not internet based right and that's that's essentially. It seems like the goal is to be able to have this kind of available everywhere. Then. Yeah. Yeah. It is. That's awesome. This game. So yeah. Uh, is is it just the um, this little bit to it right now, or is there more in this version than we saw in the uh, as a mini game? It's it's basic. What you play. That's basically how it works. Except you can send your score to Twitter then and. Oh, I yeah. gotcha. Cool. Oh, that's right, I can't move on from the end unless it's pointed the right way. I think I could have done that in the other one, though. I think it was actually pointed uh, uh, vertically and I was still able to move to the exit, but maybe not. Maybe I'm mistaken. Oh, I had a clear shot there. I just needed to go for it. <laughs> Almost there we go. Oh, and it changes to a stop right at that moment that I go for it. <laughs> Professional hackers, you say? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not even getting at the first step now. <laughs> uh, I'm definitely not being patient enough with them here. Is this is this one that you'd be um, planning to add music or anything else to, to kind of cut the silence, or is it just meant for it to kind of be dry and uh, technical like this? Yeah, I wanted to add while you are playing. There's this guy talking in background, like, "No crap, damn it!" Like you know, reacting to what you know, if the thing dying and all that, and like you know, kind of like mumbling and commentary on. But in a funny way, you know, I wanted to add some kind of presence there that's um, more opportunity for jokes. I see. Well, that's always a good thing to have. Um, would you be, I guess, doing full voice acting? Would you be using like a simulated voice like the Microsoft Sam or whatever, whatever your default uh, text-to-speech thing is? Or what, what would be your plan for adding that sort of stuff? Probably voice acting, but uh, I I, would, I could distort the voice or something to make it sound alien or not not uh, make it sound funnier. Like I think when you change pitches on voices, like the high pitch is sometimes cute. You know, like kind of play around with that and see if it makes some kind of like like a, a, a guy commenting or maybe a computer commenting. And, you know. But I like voice acting. I mean. Uh, the last game I just released, it's not on here yet, Froggy, it's computer voices that are like the frog comments on and has a superiority complex as you move <laughs> around and stuff, you know, but it's computer voice, so it adds a lot to it because, you know, computer voice does sound kind of like a frog, so. Yeah, a little bit, you're right. Huh, that'll be fun. 
so that's that's going to be hitting uh, Tetragon Arcade, or is that going to be a standalone sort of thing? I, I am I'm gonna put it in today, but uh, here I'll send you the link to it. Cool. All right, I'm going to just make the camera disappear for just a second while I track that down. Okie dokie. By the way, is that a trampoline behind you? Yes, um, it's, I'm supposed to be exercising, but I never use it. <laughs> I get ya. There we go. All right, so I'm just gonna drop it in the bar at the top here, and we'll check out Froggy. All right, Froggy. It's hungry. Slate now. Download trailer. Trailer. Let's start there. <laughs> Holy crap, I didn't realize we're almost at the end of the time. <laughs> Armageddon Highway, I like that. Not you, you're froggy. Awesome. <laughs> All right, play now. Let's get on into it here. And of course, there were, uh, I think there were maybe one or two more games that we still didn't quite get to on the main site, but, you know, it's free to access. Anybody can get on there and check it out if they want to. The uh, the beeps and boops during the loading there remind me of uh, Commodore 64 and that sort of stuff. Yeah, originally for the soundtrack for the game, I wanted it to be exactly like that, like even computer generated. So the bleeps and bloops there are, uh, you know, it, it, those are dyna dynamic. But then later on in the actual game, it's uh, it's pre-made audio, but. Yeah, I wanted. I really wanted it to be, but I, I got carried away with chip tunes, and uh, then it turned into more epic than you know. <laughs> I get you. All right, let's get into this here. Press Enter, D for directions. Given five froggies. This game is not for cat people. Okay. <laughs> Interesting detail. Q, B, P, or Y, is that for a uh, uh, different type of keyboard? Oh, no, it's just a joke. You can do up, down, left, right, W, S, A, D. But then I thought, well, what if I threw in just some bogus letters that are really hard to use? Like, would people try it? <laughs> Is this the trailer playing again here? Yeah, you okay. can just press S yeah. to skip through it. Let's, uh, let's do that. So I'm trying to eat the bugs and not get squashed. Yeah, 
So this is Armageddon Highway. <laughs> That's one. So how long did you say this one took you? I started it in April and released it the day before yesterday. Cool. So that's... Oh, I see. They don't move unless I move, so I can be as tactical as I want. And let the explosions fade away before I move into that spot. Actually, I have to correct. I started in August with the game, not April. So, yeah. Ah, uh, gotcha. Yeah, I thought you said August earlier, but yeah. I, I wasn't sure. I was like, wait, was that another game or was that this one? No, it's August. I got confused. Level up. Nice. I didn't even realize there were more levels. There's five, and with each one it gets a little bit harder. The last one is really fast. The cars move really fast, and you move a little faster. It's a little bit more chaotic. Nice. I like that you can really kind of work your tactics how you want to with it. And, of course, let the explosions resolve rather than walking straight into them. It's very interesting because it's kind of got like a passive and an active uh, element that the butterflies are always moving, yeah. the explosions will go whether or not you're actually moving, and the cars don't drive unless you're moving. So some things kind of move like asynchronously almost. Does it say what I need to get to the next level? Or is it just survival on yeah, the Yeah, at the bottom it says goal and it counts down with each butterfly you oh, okay. get. The red butterflies give the most score, then there's yellow and the blue are the least. Okay, so I should target the red ones, gotcha. The red and ones you do are... get a little... Go ahead. You do get a little bonus for when cars collide, so it's just a survival bonus. Nice. And I see the, the cars can also take out the butterflies, it looks like. Hmm. Good stuff. So you can't move along the diagonals, though? It's just up, down, left, right? Yeah. Is diagonal something that you would want to add, or do you like the challenge of it just being up, down, left, right? I like it being just up, down, left, right, because uh, for me, I wanted to make something that's kind of like yeah, I used yeah. to play on, you know, from floppy disks or whatever, you yeah. know, so the, it's really simple game, but I, I like to think it's addictive, you know? Yeah. It's definitely something that I could see people, you know, spending a lot of time just kind of, you know, passing the time waiting for stuff and getting a little bit of froggy. Yeah. So I've almost finished this level. Explosions. Explosions. <laughs> so many explosions. Level up. Alright, I'm going to speed run these last two levels. Let's see how I do. <laughs> Actually, not so bad. Nom 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 nom. Om nom 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 indeed. Froggy voice. I, I do like the robot voices with it. That definitely adds a, uh, a level of kind of funniness and silliness. So that's the same sort of thing, the, the robot voice that you'd be adding to uh, Hackatron? Yeah, something like that. But, you know, like... I want it to be jo funny, like, you know, it would add to the whole joke and humor of what you're doing. Yeah, I getcha. So that level was pretty easy. I just kinda got through it. 
There were a lot of explosions early on that, that helped out, and I can see that's happening in this level too. Uh, it's just a mat mostly almost a matter of avoiding the explosions at this point. <laughs> Whoops. Is there a, a bonus for finishing a level with more froggies left? Yeah, you do. You get a. Uh, there's certificates you get. Like if you die, you would get awarded a certificate, and you get a certificate if you survive without die dying at all. Nice. As far as I as far as I remember, I think that's in there. Very cool. <laughs> Yay! The wildlife refuge. So that, that's actually the end of this one. It doesn't have another uh, uh, follow-up game that happens from here. No, that's the end. Uh, you can choose to keep playing for high score, and then it would uh, cut, cut you off if you died. But uh, you can then keep playing to get a really big number. I already wanted to add a little mini game in there, but like I ran out of time, and I have to move on now to the whole gotcha. PlayStation thing. But. If you did want to add a mini game, I can think of probably a real easy one you could do on that screen where it's the frog just kind of hanging out, and it's the 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 end screen there. Have little flies or butterflies buzzing around that you can click them, and the tongue comes out and grabs them, and just you know, a little extra, take it or leave it. <laughs> okay. I uh, I can't stop myself from throwing suggestions whenever I whenever <laughs> I come up with them during interviews and otherwise. So, let's bring it back to the, uh, I guess to the about page here. So, this has been a lot of fun. I, I've had a lot of fun checking out the games here and uh, hanging out with you here. It's uh, been a great time. So, everybody, of course, if you aren't already following uh, Alien Melon on Twitter, definitely do that if you want to be checking out more of this awesome. You can go to tetragedon.com if yourself if you want to check out these games. They're available. You can you know, learn from them if you're an aspiring developer. The art's available. The audio's available. Everything is... It's totally cool. So, um, this, this has been a lot of fun. Thank you very much for coming on here. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. It's, um, been a lot of fun. I love seeing people play it. It means a lot. For sure. And I, I, I've made games and I, I know the feeling of, you know, people trying to play the games and some people like them, some people don't, but, you know, the, these are definitely, I have a lot of fun with these. I really like these games and definitely a, uh, a, a thing kind of representing kind of internet culture and pop culture over the past 20 years so it's a really great project i like it so much so i could just keep on talking about how i like it here but it is really time to wrap up is there anything else that you wanted to say or bring up or let people know about before we wrap up here yeah um i encourage them to go download source files and make your own games with it and have fun with it and if you do send me a link to it. I'd love to know what you do with it. For sure. Alright, so this is the end of the show here, so thank you all very much for coming, and I will see you all next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.